Hi, so uh, this aims to be a quick tutorial for recording guitars in Linux environment. Uh, just a few words about my setup here. So uh, I'm using the Jack sound system. There's also something called Pipewire that you might be using, but uh, the Jack comes by default for at least a version of Ubuntu Studio that I'm using here. Um, so what I have here is the system input and the system output. So these are this is my physical audio interface that I have and uh, I have the Scarlett 18i20 which is why I have so many inputs and outputs here but if you would have like Scarlett Solo or something like that then you would have the same thing but just less inputs and outputs. Now when I'm recording um, it goes in here so this is what I'm, I'm using OBS to record so OBS here is everything that goes in here and um, so my capture channel 3 is my microphone here, so you can hear my microphone. And then in my system playback, I have the 7 and 8 is my, my headset, so I'm also hearing what I'm talking here myself. Uh, this one is just something that, you know, comes out from, let's say if I listen to YouTube videos, I can then hear those those in my, my ears as well. So that's about the setup that I have, have um, here for the recording. So when I'm recording guitars, I would definitely recommend using this uh, GX plugins set uh, that you can just, just find from GitHub. Just Google for that. There are some lines of things that you need to write and, and it gets you installed. But if you're using Linux, you are probably familiar with that already. Uh, really good set of plugins. I totally recommend. And then obviously we need to use some DAW here. So I'm using Ardour. And it's Ardour 6. And uh, just do a new session. I tend to use templates, so I have done my own template where I have all my drumming set up and all my single chains already set up for different kind of guitars and, and bass and, and so on, whatever I like to use. Uh, but let's just now do the recording of guitars here. Uh, what? Oh yeah, it's the oh yeah, it's a mixing thing. So yeah, that's why it looked a little bit weird. Um, yeah, so here is Ardor. You are hopefully already familiar with that. But yeah, let's, um, let's do something something first that the recording is successful. So I want you to hear what comes out of the master channel. So I need to wire that to the to the OBS. And um, now that I fired up Ardor, the it's it comes visible here in the in the car as well, because it's all part of the same Jack audio sound system. So all the tracks that I add to Ardor will also be here uh, visible and I could do all the routing here as well. Uh, anyway, uh, I will just do it from here now because it's more visual this way. Uh, first of all, I want to hear the click track in my in my headset. So left and right channels, one and two. Uh, same thing with the master. I want to hear the master left and, left and right channel in my headset. And I want you to hear those as well. So I will just wire. Um, the click track for you and the master for you as well. Yeah, and you know when you add a lot of tracks to Ardor, this comes like totally unusable, like total mess. So I'm just doing it right now here just to show it more visually what's happening. Okay, um, back to Ardor. So now our master channel should be heard if I, if I add, add anything here. So let's start by adding a, a guitar track here. So just an audio track, mono track, let's call it something like a guitar and add it there. And uh, in order to uh, this channel to know what it's supposed to be listening, I obviously need to tell it that, okay, use my input one from my audio interface. So my guitar is just directly plugged into the input one of my audio interface. And then we can see the single if I add, put the input monitoring on here. Uh, so now we should see that but we don't hear it yet because this this track is not yet rooted to the master channel um, you could use use like um, buses buses here that you you know root all your guitars first to a bus then you have your equal eqs there or something like that you know and then just master, wire the bus to the master but yeah let's just do it directly here so i will just choose so input is up and output is down i will choose that this goes directly to the master input so um, now we should all hear uh, the guitar and by the way if we take a look at the color we should see now that there is a uh, new guitar audio and now there's going like this this wiring uh, from output to input and so on so this will become a total mess if you have like 20 tracks going on or whatever it's uh unusable at that point. But anyway, uh, for recording the guitars, let's uh, start by adding those uh, those effects I was talking about, which uh, are quite important, obviously. So I would probably first add a uh, 
uh, tuner, so GX tuner. Um, I like to use that to tune my guitars, obviously, before recording, you should do that as well, but let's just keep it now. Um, so let's have this as a rhythm, rhythm guitar, so I would for that I would add a uh, uh, compressor, so I use calf compressor usually. Um, and uh, after that, we could add an amplifier, obviously. So I want to use the GX Cream Machine for that. I love that amplifier. That comes from the uh, the uh, GX plugin set. And then to simulate the cabinet, I'm using Impulse Response. So in order to use Impulse Response here, I need to use Convolution plugin. So um, it's a LV2 Convolution Mono. And uh, yeah, now we need to load the impulse response. So just double click it and um, you can load the impulse response to this. Um, I seem to have here in the recently used, I had the guitar hack or original between. You can just, you know, Google and download this or buy this. Some, some of these are obviously um, not free. Uh, this should be this guitar hack one. Um, and uh, yeah, so now we should get a single. That uh, should sound more like it would be recorded using an uh, real, you know, setup that you have, like a microphone, and uh, I should have added that, that uh, uh, tuner there. <laughs> anyway, um, also, by the way, fader down, uh, because the signal goes from up to down, the fader is obviously this one, so you want to control the output and not, not the input that goes, goes to those, at least usually, at least that's, that's what it, how I would do it, um, if you disagree. Give a comment. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's add that tuner as well because I hate playing with uh, guitar that's not in tune. Let's just do that first. Let's add the tuner first there and uh, check my tune quickly. So I am in uh, D tune. good now okay um so that's the cabinet simulation um that's the actual amplifier and then we have the compressor uh so for the compressor i usually tend to flatten flatten the response a little bit um so i would put the thre threshold a little bit down the ratio quite a lot actually and then a little bit make up make up gain to you know level button still so that the output doesn't peak I think that's perfect and by the way uh, when you plug your guitar in your your audio interface make sure that it's not peaking there so um, because that then you will have unwanted noise there um, and I'm going for clean here um, or slightly clean <laughs> not, not not like perfectly clean because this doesn't give you perfectly clean sound uh, but the level in this one is basically the gain gain so I will put that like really down and then I will compensate with the volume so I should get a much cleaner tone here Maybe we can add a little bit of I don't mind having a yeah I think that's good so now we have a, um, you know, decent uh, clean guitar. And let's just record something with that. I will add the click track on and record this track. And then I will set the recording mode on. And let's just, you know, try to play something. Almost perfect, but let's cut that one from there. Delete the last bit of it, and then let's also cut from here. And now I magically played it like a, a really long time. Let's uh, just listen that the transition is fine. Oh, and uh, 
the moni monitor playback on so that we can hear what's actually. <laughs> Fine. I just played it really bad, but I think it's fine. Uh, so the next thing would be to add a solo track, and let's just let's just duplicate this one because I already have uh, some things that I want to use there. But I will use a new playlist because I don't want to duplicate the actual uh, recorded track there. And for this one, I will add some distortion. Uh, let's do GXSD lead. I like that distortion plugin. And also some some uh, reverb and delay for the post effects. So GX delay and uh, GX reverb. Those are nice. Uh, so the lead pedal goes obviously before the amp, and the post effects go after. Um, that's a matter of opinion, but I like to do that. Let's check. Out. So the delay is a little bit long, and. Um, Oh, and I usually link left and right channel because otherwise uh, you get this wobbly effect if the timing is not 100% correct. Uh, maybe a bit too fast. That's probably good, but the level is a little bit high, so I will put it so that the feedback is not like super loud there. I can have it a little bit. I think that's fine. Reverb seems to be fine, just fine with how it is. And then the lead pedal, so this one, just crank it up. This is great. That's good, but there's the noise. So to get rid of the noise, uh, I will add a uh, ZAM gate. ZAM gate. Oh, other, other gates as well, but uh, for some reason I have just because I'm used to using this one. The gate always goes first. And uh, it seems to be perfect for me because it's cutting the noise, so but it's not cutting anything else or losing the dynamics, so that's that's perfect. And now we are ready to record the solo for this nice uh, track here. It's a little bit louder this channel, so I'm putting it a little bit down and uh, I don't have to put that up. Let's rather put that down and Let's listen what we have here. That's it. And just, you know, add a uh, track off. Bad bending there, but. That's a good. That's a good baseline to continue. You know, doing doing the uh, mixing of it, and uh, then when you're done, usually I would add to the, the master channel. I would do some some like really last minute EQing stuff, and uh, also the limiter so that it doesn't go peaking at any point too much. And then just go for session and export and export to whichever format you like to do, and that's it. So. Um, Hopefully you found something interesting from this one and uh, thanks. Bye.